In the early days of the 21st century, it's easy to believe that all of the empty places on the map have been filled and that little remains to be explored. But nothing could be further from the truth. Today, Robin Bell, a geophysicist at Columbia University's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, and Michael Studinger, also of Lamont Doherty, will talk to us a little bit about an expedition she will help to lead that will fill in an enormous gap in our knowledge of Antarctica as part of the scientific deployment known as the International Polar Year. Dr. Bell and other scientists, as well as engineers, pilots, and support staff from the United Kingdom, the United States, Germany, Australia, Japan, and China, will join forces later this month to study Antarctica's Gambertsov Mountains, a mountain chain buried under four kilometers of Antarctic ice. Dr. Bell, Dr. Studinger, welcome. Hello, Peter. Hello, Peter. First of all, this sounds very complicated, very expensive, and very dangerous. What do we hope to learn that could possibly make this all worthwhile, Dr. Bell? Well, Peter, this is the last unexplored part of our planet where there's a mountain range we know nothing about. One that does, isn't exposed, but remains absolutely a mystery to anyone. So that's what we hope to do, is solve the last major mountain mystery on our planet. So, Michael, couldn't this all be done nowadays by satellites and rovers and other remote technologies? Why do we need to send people into the field to do this? I think the uh, processes we are interested in are really at taking place of one of the most inaccessible places on Earth. So it is already very difficult to travel to the uh, interior of a uh, vast continental ice sheet, but still, when once we have managed to do this, we are standing about two and a half miles on top of the uh, region we uh, want to study. So it is a really uh, very uh, difficult place to, uh, uh, to get information. And I think we need really um, information from the air and on the ground uh, that we can't collect from space uh, even in the 21st century. There is still room for a human element in exploration of Antarctica nowadays. Yes, definitely. I, I think uh, we are certainly heading towards a, uh, a, a great future where we can uh, automize a lot of processes, but it still requires uh, human beings and trained scientists and engineers and pilots on the ground to uh, collect this uh, critical information that we need to uh, understand the uh, polar processes. You talked about this being the last unexplored mountain range, but what's so special about the Gimbertsovs? I mean, they are just one more mountain range, it would seem to, to most folks. The Gambertsov Mountains are basically the biggest unsolved puzzle in global tectonics because to make a mountain, usually there should be a collision. Two continents should come together and you produce a large mountain range like the Alps or the Himalayas. But there's been no collision in East Antarctica for 500 million years, so since long before the dinosaurs. So there shouldn't be a mountain range kind of like opening up a pyramid and finding an astronaut inside. It just shouldn't be there. So, uh, Michael, what can we learn, and we've talked about this a little bit, from the Gambertsovs um, that we couldn't learn somewhere else on Earth or even somewhere else in Antarctica? I think in recent years it has become fairly clear, or actually uh, right after the discovery, that we need to understand the uh, um, interior of uh, the East Antarctic continent and how the uh, ice sheet has formed um, 35 million years ago. Uh, these are fairly unique processes that can't be studied uh, anywhere else on the planet because uh, they don't happen anywhere else. So we uh, really need to go where the East Antarctic ice sheet has presumably um, um, uh, started to encase the entire continent um, some 35 million years ago. It's the only place to uh, study these processes. Now, I also understand that there is some climate science involved in this project, um, that you'll be drilling something called ice cores. So first of all, w can you tell us what an ice core is? But also, can you explain a little more about that? I guess, uh, you know, what sorts of things can we learn about climate from the Gambertsov range, Dr. Bell? Well, quickly, since the Gambertsov mountains are where the ice sheet first grew, on top, we hope to find what's called the oldest ice on our planet, and where if we drill a core through, we can actually get ice that has samples of very, very old atmosphere. And this is what we're after, is seeing if we can find, on top or around the Gambertsov Mountains, 
the oldest ice on our planet where we can understand what the climate was like over a million years ago. So, Michael, can you talk to me about what a typical day in the field uh, might be like? What kinds of things might be going on? Um, you, you talked about uh, drilling ice cores, for example, and using aircraft. So it sounds like it's going to be a, a complicated day-to-day uh, -day operation. Yes, um, our, our project will um, kind of collect uh, airborne geophysical data over the Gumbertsif Mountains. Um, which mean we, we have uh, about two probably flights per day um, and these flights need to be prepared. We need to upload coordinates to the uh, flight computer, uh, discuss with the pilots what the uh, best approach is, then actually do the flight, collect the uh, data in the air, come back to the ground and then do a uh, quick first uh, analysis to make sure that we have collected um, uh, valid data and after that, we uh, have to make uh, decisions um, uh, if we have to refly certain profiles or parts of the survey or if we uh, can keep, keep going. So this is a very busy day in the field, but... Uh